Okay, so I'm uh, going to start our next talk. Um, as, the leader of the as the lead red team engineer at Palo Alto Networks, PJ is an information security expert who is focused on ensuring the security of the company's infrastructure. Over the years, PJ has had the opportunity to present her work at several security conferences. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Oh, good. Because I was starting, I was looking around the room, like looking at the sea of faces, and kind of got this overwhelming sense that uh, feeling or thought, I guess, that like, what a wonderful time this is for a nap. <laughs> Maybe I'm just projecting. I don't know. At least you guys are in a chair. Um, so I'm PJ, uh, or Project Rajagari, if anybody's adventurous enough to pronounce that. I work uh, with Palo Alto Networks. Raise your hands if uh, you guys know about the company, what we do. Okay. Awesome. There was no really follow-up to that question. Um, <laughs> I joined the team, um, the red team, really about just over a year ago uh, to kind of build a structured program uh, for performing red teaming activities at the company, targeting just the Palo Alto Networks um, infrastructure. We don't do that for our customers or anything. But the session is just primarily going to be like a process story about building that program. I guess afternoons are not my most productive times. So one afternoon, afternoon, for some reason, I thought, like, I wonder if there is a song about cybersecurity. So I Googled it, and sure enough, there is a... Well, not a song, but at least lyrics to a song. I don't know if anybody has actually recorded the song, but it's called Cyber Crying. Um, and it's penned by Steve Morgan. And in, in a CSO online article, he mentions that for him, this is kind of a battle cry for cyber security defenders or cyber defenders. Um, the last two lines of this verse, uh, this is not the entire song, it's just a a particular verse that I chose to include here. The last two lines really, uh, he's putting a big question mark against the state of cybersecurity or cyber defenses and how effective they are. And this is going somewhere, I promise. So I got to thinking about it. This January of uh, 2018, I'm going to be completing 11 years in this profession as a full-time uh, member. Not a long time, at the same time, quite a long time. Um, the field has changed so much, uh, dare I say evolved so much. I started in, on the application side of things uh, at a time when everything was about border protection, like talking to people who relied on firewalls and trying to explain to them what this application security was and why should they care about it. Um, that was quite a challenging task. But now that I think about it, it feels like my career has really come a full circle. Because now I'm at a company that, I guess, depends a lot on understanding application context um, so that their technology can effectively prevent against uh, cyber attacks. So quite a lot of things have changed. And that's only on the technology side. I haven't had, most of my career has been on the product research side. Uh, only in the past few years I've been, you know, a member of the enterprise security kind of realm. And things have changed there a lot as well. So for organizations that actually have the budget, the functions that are being now included in a infrastructure organization, stuff like social engineering training, stuff like, you know, security awareness for employees, threat intelligence. These are the things that we're looking at. And this is quite a bit of change from just a few years ago. And pen testing is not an exception either. <clears throat> when I joined the team, there was already, there were a couple of, or there are still a couple of pen testing functions within the company. So the first question was, well, why do we need a red teaming function again? How is it different from pen testing? And conceptually, it's really not. Um, there's very little that's actually different from between pen testing and, and red teaming. Um, 
the first definition is pen testing. The second one is more of an army definition of threat teaming. But if you apply it to IT or, or uh, the technology field, they're kind of the same. Um, the area where they started kind of drifting apart, at least in the enterprise world, is pen testing has kind of taken a bit more of a focused um, of stance, I guess. So today, any uh, mature InfoSec organization is, wants to work closely with application developers, uh, with the engineers, to make sure that pen testing is part of the STLC process. So anytime a, soft, anytime a new application version is released or built, people want to make sure that pen testers are hammering away at it, finding every single vulnerability they can, fix it before it goes, it goes live. Um, same thing with network or system side. Pen testing is be becoming a part of the change management piece. Like anytime you deploy a new infrastructure, you deploy a new system, uh, they want some pen testing to be done on it. So it's becoming more of a find everything we can for a particular target which is amazing. I feel like it's the right direction, but that leaves a gap, which is, what's the big picture? How do you do the reality check? Right? Fine, all of your pieces might be doing the right things, but is the whole really get greater than, the, than kind of the sum of the parts? If you have 10 applications, and if you, if you have secured all the 10 applications, does that mean that you are now immune to cyber attacks? Who answers that question? That's what the red team does. The application security program doesn't care if I, saw, if I fix all my bugs in this app, or if I, let's say, leave one of the bugs open in one of my applications. How does that interplay with an employee being fished for some important information in HR, which ultimately results in the theft of you know, your secret cookie recipe or something? Pen testing functions today in the enterprise don't really try to answer that question because they have other things to do. And red teaming, in my opinion, is what that, um, what that question is for or who that question is for. So with that, kind of, and this, these were the conversations I was having with the leadership um, in the InfoSec organization because there was a lot of confusion about what, what the difference is and all. So with that, actually, squared away. The next question was, OK, if this is what we have to do, how are we going to do it? So one day, um, one of my senior directors came and said, hey, I need a playbook for red teaming. I said, OK, I, you got it. I've never really created a playbook for anything. Um, so I googled you know, football playbooks, because that's the only really context I know for playbooks. And I started reading through some of the online versions, and they talked about this. Now, I know nothing about American football or any kind of football, really. <laughs> so it was very confusing. But I was trying to apply that to like red teaming. And I said, well, should I start creating plays where like, I, if I know all the defense tactics that my, uh, my company has, what are all the offensive plays that I can execute? And then see how it have taken me forever to do all that. So I changed gears a little bit. The playbook that I created, what I wanted it to be was, let's say somebody comes, joins the team. They have, they have had some pen testing experience. They know the technical know-how. But they need to know, well, how do I even go about planning a red team exercise? How do I execute it? Uh, how do I inform the right stakeholders? What who are the stakeholders? What are their roles? What are their responsibilities? There's so many questions that need to be answered when you're actually planning uh, an attack against your own company. No. Um, so I wanted the playbook to be the piece that answers those questions. You take that, that's the Bible, you take that, and you go through the framework that's defined in that playbook, and you, know, you succeed. So. We did create a playbook, and I wish I had, I could release it today to you guys, a general version, not, not a company-specific version. But it's not there yet. But I can give you what, I've already kind of covered some of the pieces. It, it basically, first of all, defines what red teaming means to us as a company. 
It defines what the roles, responsibilities, who the stakeholders are. It de defines a five-stage approach to how the whole, the entire point is red teaming is about big objectives, at least for an enterprise. It's not about go own that system. That's not red teaming. The goal is, I don't know, steal code or inject your own code. How would you go about it? So taking something of a broad objective like that and breaking it into pieces where you can actually then come up with attack scenarios and attack plans, that's what the playbook is about. And so we have defined like a five-stage approach that goes, first is objective selection, who needs to actually decide what the objective is for a particular exercise. Um, going, investigating that objective. We don't go, at least we as a red team don't really adhere to the zero knowledge kind of approach because it's just impossible to do is you are inside the company uh, and you're gonna know things. But you still need to do some investigation, some open source intelligence gathering, something to really understand what needs to be, what the target targets need to be, either people, processes, systems, to actually get to that objective. So how do you go about inspecting that? Then comes exercise planning. And this is a key piece, like, we fall under the SecOps team, the security operations team. So the director of that function needs to know what we're gonna do so that we don't end up waking up our CEO in the middle of the night because we created an incident. Um, so they need to know what the exercise plan is and why are we going after certain targets. And then it's the execution piece is the most fun piece, um, also the easiest to actually tackle. And then comes postmortem. So that's basically how it goes. Um, it's been, it was, a, it was actually a fun task to create that thing. Um, but once it was there, obviously we went through reviews, you know, everybody had their feedback. Uh, but the real way to actually test it out was to uh, conduct, uh, to use it, to plan a, uh, an exercise. And we did that. We did uh, use it kind of to go to guide an external or a, a red team exercise conducted by an external partner of ours. We used it to conduct one internally. And it worked out brilliantly, I mean, obviously. But there were a few things here and there, tweaks that we needed to make. Uh, things that I'd missed, for instance, um, you know, I forgot to define the rules of engagement, which is kind of a key piece uh, to any red team um, really assessment. What is allowed, what is not allowed, things like that. But, uh, you know, minus those, uh, those little things here and there, uh, it worked out great, which is amazing. With that done, with a clear, with clarity around what the program is, how we're going to do it, uh, it was time to get tactical. And there are a few pieces um, to operationalizing a, uh, any red team program, tooling. There's nothing really to do there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. I mean, just listening to you know, viruses talk, you get like 150 different ideas. Um, there's the infrastructure piece, which is a key piece. Uh, especially since it's been used for offensive stuff, you really don't want anybody getting in there and then using it for their own benefit without you knowing about it. Um, there's the training piece for the red teamers, really? Oh, wow, okay. Um, but how do you actually, how do you, all these things are good, but how do you measure your coverage? How do you know your tooling is good? How do you know your uh, talent is good, right? So the the thing that we have focused recently on is actually building frameworks that allow us to do that measurement. Like metrics was the most challenging aspect of the playbook for me. And the first like, pass that we are taking at it is through modeling of uh, TTPs, tactics, well, techni tactics, techniques, and procedures. And the inspiration came from uh, stuff like what MITRE is doing through their uh, attack matrix, through their um, CAR framework. Uh, and this is basically, it connects all the things we know about campaigns to the TTPs they're using, which is amazing. That's exactly what I want. But I want to be able to control it. I want to be able to use it, not, not just for planning, but for tracking against it. Which TTPs we, have we used before? Have they succeeded? Have they failed? Um, I, don't want to be, be, I don't want to continue using the same TTPs over and over again because um, that doesn't help the organization get any better. Um, 
so keeping track of that was essential. But none of the existing ones really helped us a whole lot, so we created our own, um, kind of. This is the first version. Um, doesn't really, there's a reason it's very blurry and whatnot. Um, but it, it basically is just a conceptual map of all the TTPs uh, that we know about in general. And we just have a bunch of features there that we can use to actually track across that um, knowledge base that we have of TTPs, all the stuff that I just mentioned a, a minute ago. The one question that comes up is red team, blue team. Uh, a lot of times we kind of keep our operation secret so that we want to test our response readiness uh, in a realistic fashion. And I get asked, why are you all so secretive about it? You know, why can't you just tell us? Um, and it's a valid question. It's, it's not, we're not trying to you know, be confrontational. We're not trying to say you suck or whatever to the blue team, right? Um, we want to work together because we're, we're heading towards the same goal. So purple teaming, uh, I hope at least some of you guys might have heard about it. But it's basically how blue teams and red teams work together. Um, and red and blue make purple, so purple teaming. But concept makes perfect sense. How do you actually put it in practice? There's no framework. There's no really system that allows you to do that. And for that, um, on that angle, like I took inspiration from my experience uh, judging a CCDC competition that was the Midwest one. And they use this system, and I'm pretty sure all CCDCs use it, is where you supply your challenges to the, to the teams who are competing um, using that piece of software. Uh, you assign what score that each, what they call the injects, uh, what score each challenge carries, and what evidence the competing teams need to provide to show that they prevented uh, successfully against that particular inject. So this is the, the reporting portion of it. Like They submit their flags, and if they're correct, we give them scores. So kind of similar concept, we built our own framework uh, application that has three modules, red team, blue team, purple team. The red team module basically allows us to supply all the details on what activities we are conducting as part of a scenario. It actually allows us to upload a script. Uh, if we create a script that executes an entire scenario across the infrastructure, we just run it once, and all of the details are recorded by, in the database. The blue team simultaneously, this is we, we are sitting in the same room, we are working together. The blue team records all the alerts they are seeing, all the actions they have taken, um, and that goes into the, the logging database. And it does its magic, and what it spits out is how well we performed against that scenario. So let's say I have a, I have a scenario, we run it five times. Um, blue team records their response for all those five scenarios. And across a period of time, we know how well we did. Like this dip here is suspicious. What happened here? We should have like stayed constant if we already had all the alerts and everything. Um, but there are situations when sometimes accidentally uh, rules get deleted or alerts get turned off. So identifying those things, that definitely is an amazing objective for a purple team uh, exercise where we just sit together and we go through known scenarios um, without any secrecy. But anyway, so that was the second framework, or that is the second framework that we built. Um, and that's, that's all I have for today. So questions? Yeah, we're working on making a public version of it, right? Uh, yeah, so it should, once we're done with it, we'll hopefully publish it on our, uh, on our True. Um, and that's the, that's the challenge of being an enterprise red team. Certain things, I'll give you an example. Um, phishing employees really never ends in a, in a good response from the employees. And there's, there's now HR involved and everything, all those concepts come into play. Which is not, it's not necessarily a big problem, right? You can always simulate phishing uh, for any given target group, employee group and go from there. Um, but, there. but yeah, we don't want any, just any team member saying, hey, I'm gonna go fish 
whoever and make them feel victimized. And so there are those things that come into play. And as much as we want to say that we're going to be exactly a set hacker or whatever, uh, there are certain things we need to adhere to. There are, you know, you can't go after cell systems during the end of quarter. It's just, it's just business sense, I guess. Uh, but at least so far, we haven't seen that it has impacted the effectiveness of anything that we do. So sometimes you have to say, well, it's, yeah, we, we just can't have that as a rule. And that's a discussion to have. But it's not that they give us a list and say, this is what you're going to adhere to. It's a, it's a discussion. So yes. Um, so one of the things we're hoping that the purple teaming dashboard is one thing that our execs are always going to be interested in. How they have their assumptions about how well we are protected, but they need to see the evidence, right? So that's that's absolutely one aspect of it. Um, other ways we are doing it right now, we have quarterly business reviews and stuff like that where we update uh, update the execs. Uh, it depends on who the target was. Sometimes we need to go to the VP of IT um, to talk about something we have observed. Um, so it, it just depends on, on the exercise, what the objective was, who needs to know about what happened, things like that. All right, thank you very much. Thank Big you. hand for PJ. Thanks.